Radka, Nicole, thank you so much for joining us here at Risk Minds International. What would you say, Radka, are the key challenges at the moment of, of the ECB climate stress test that you've been talking about at this event? So if you ask me, and this is what also most of my clients are asking, where should we get the data? So data, 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 this will be the main challenge. Um, next to data, of course, how can I integrate the different climate models within risk management? And what we are currently facing is that there are two types of how this is being tackled by our clients. Um, on the one side, some are thinking about to really buy different solutions which are available on the market. And on the other side, you have also the make, really to take your time, gather data and build your own models. With regards to the upcoming climate stress test, which starts in, in January next year, you do not have the time for the make. So most of our clients are really buying both data and methods. So I think that this is a good way of also going forward with regards to being able to calculate the impact stemming from climate risk. Uh, but when you integrate the whole climate risks and perspectives, also environmental risks, social and governance, you have to really think about where should you incorporate it within your internal risk framework. And presumably you've got, got to be a bit careful around where you choose to find that data and how diverse that data is. Is it, is it good data as well? Yeah, definitely. So due to the fact that um, you have to use also reported data, um, but what we are seeing is that if we're looking at reported data, it's maybe only one third of the data that you really can find out there and for your portfolio. So the question is how you tackle the two thirds of the data which is out there. So therefore, you also have to build approximation models for that as well. And with that being said, this is why we are going most of the time with the buy decision, because when you look at the different solution and climate excellence is the one uh, Nicole um, has built, then you already have the data within and you also have the models which are approximating the data which is currently scarce. Nicole, what would you say and who would you say are doing this well? What are the best practices that you're seeing around this currently? I would say a lot of the best practice is determined by the mindset that you enter to when you start the exercise. So we do have a technical piece and um, really being smart around what is it that we want to achieve, when is it material, where can we draw approximations, I think is one of the elements. Another one is around the governance where it might be a one-off exercise right now, but it's not going to go away. It won't go away from a stress testing perspective, it won't go away from a reporting perspective. A lot of our clients are already moving into the full risk integration, so rather thinking about that as something that wants to stick and should be sticking, I think probably is a smart way of thinking about it. Um, also in terms of governance, who is involved, who should have the information, how do you spread it across the organization so that it isn't just one risk kind of stress test, but it's connected to a lot of the work that banks are doing anyway on net zero, on stress testing, on reporting. So connecting it right. And I think the third piece for me is the most fundamental, which is around, I mentioned the mindset, what does it tell me in the end? It's not about being super precise with the number, but it's rather around getting to grips with what different climate scenarios might mean and how they would impact the business. And then also drawing the conclusion of what does it mean for business potential? So really rather taking it as an inspiration and as a training and learning exercise with a risk and strategic view, instead of just treating it as something, as I mentioned, that's going away and probably not coming back. Talking about that big picture stuff, I mean, what would you say in terms of, of, of best drawing that connection between risk and net zero? How, how do you do that best? Mm -hmm. What I would say is that when we are looking really at stress testing, we have the connection of them both. So on the one side, where uh, what are my risk parameters? How can I really evolve my risk tool set around this? And on the other side, what is really the strategic mix of my, my portfolio going forward? So how does the strategy with regards to net zero should evolve, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, and the, the points are not independent of one another, right? So I, I can draw I can draw it up and basically say, well, if it's, uh, if it's a mining company and it's mining lithium, then it's probably good if it is net zero as well. If it's a coal mine, it's probably irrelevant whether it's net zero, it might still impact my risk profile and my 
overarching risk strategy in a sense. So again, connecting the two, coming from kind of a, a company or at least a subsector view on where dynamics, different dynamics might impact companies from a physical and transition standpoint in the short term and in the long term, I think provides a very strong decision basis that is future proof. And we're using the word future proof quite a bit in this context, um, given all the, as I mentioned, all the dynamics from a reputation side, from a risk side, from a reporting angle, they will be intertwined much more closely anyway. So taking that approach already now is probably a smart idea. So with all of that in mind, we're in an environment here at an event with so many leaders in this sector, in the risk uh, world. What would you hope they take away from any conversations that they have with you this week? Radhika? My message will be climate is just the first step on a journey that we are currently at. Um, next year or the year after, biodiversity is going to be a major driver as well and then social and governance will follow. So we have to start early, already now, gathering data, adapting models, and also preparing to extend the existing infrastructure in such a way that all of these different dimensions are tackled. So, so make sure you get on board right now. Right now, as soon as possible. Nicole? I would say it's doable, so we can start now. Um, second, it's already informative to both risk management and the broader strategy. And we are approximating, I think, a tipping point. So it's worthwhile to be early in the pack. I hope you both have the opportunity to get your messages across this week. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Taking the time. <laughs>